Welcome to the second season of the Make the Future podcast. I'm your host, Jacques Beauvais, Dean of the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Ottawa. Join us as we have conversations with different thought leaders about current issues facing the engineering industry. Let's explore the future of technology and innovation and how, through creativity and collaboration, we can make the future. They say the future is coming, but that's not true. The future is already here. And it's relentless. It's not going to wait for you to catch up. How will we live in this future? How will we make sense of it? To define our course, we need a new perspective. One that engages our curiosity, that activates our imagination, one that defies the conventional. To own the future, we need to do more than just see it. We need to make it. Welcome to today's podcast. In today's episodes, we're joined by three of our friends from Canada North, Canada's largest technology park. Not only are these individual leaders in industry, but they're also proud University of Ottawa alumni. My co-host today is Veronica Farmer, Director of Partnerships and Commercializations for the U Ottawa Canada North Initiative and the Chief Navigator and Marketing Strategist for True Course Communications. Thank you very much for joining us today, Veronica. Happy to be here. Our special guests today are Jean-Charles Femi, U Ottawa Electrical Engineering alumnus and the CEO of the Centre of Excellence in Next Generation Networks, also known as Syngen. Welcome, JC. Thank you. And Jamie Petten, U Ottawa alumna and, and the President and Executive Director of the Canada North Business Association. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. So one of the questions we want to sort of address um, in this season is how do we make uh, a real competitive technology park work? What makes it tick? How does it function? And of course, from our perspective, what kind of a role does a university play in that? So could you perhaps, Jamie, just give us a little bit of history as to when it officially became a technology park? Yeah, absolutely. So we're here in, in Canada North, which is Canada's largest technology park. And today there are over 540 companies and 24,000 plus employees here in Canada North. Um, but there is a a unique uh, history to Canada North that dates back 30 to 35 years. Um, and it all originates with the founding of Mitel uh, and a number of our you know, telecommunications companies here in Canada North. Um, that uh, created a, a, a bed of, of success with Mitel and then subsequently Newbridge Networks. Um, that inevitably formed our uh, foundation of talent here in Canada North. Uh, many of those senior executives, uh, as well as you know, managers uh, uh, and and contributors within the early days of Mitel and Newbridge Networks, they they exited and spun out their own companies in Canada North, and that then you know with a compounding effect. Um, created a, a diverse ecosystem here over the past 30, 30 years. Um, we now see a number of subsectors as a result, telecommunications being our history, um, which has now you know, evolved into next generation networks. We have uh, connected and autonomous vehicles work here uh, with the uh, BlackBerry QNX Center of Excellence uh, and a number of others contributing to that. Software, software as a service. We even have you know, companies within the life sciences sector, all uh, creating this very dynamic ecosystem that we here have here in Canada North as a tech park. How different is it from other technology parks? Is it that diversity or, or what makes it special? Yeah, I think it is the diversity of subsectors. I think in addition to that, you know, the long history uh, and, and track record and success that exists here as well. Um, and uh, the talent, the talent that we have here spread across multiple generations with uh, varying skill sets. Uh, of course, you know, our R&D uh, aspect of the park tends to be the focus. Um, and there's, you know, an, a strong engineering uh, a talent here in Canada North, but in addition to that, you know, we have other uh, tactical and strategic uh, contributors from a marketing, operations, finance perspective uh, that all make the companies themselves um, 
you know, holistically run uh, and contribute from a global perspective. Uh, and I guess I'll just add one more point in that, you know, our companies here in Canada North range from companies that were founded here and started here as Ottawa-based, Canada North-based companies that have grown into global multinationals, but we also have uh, you know, global multinationals that have uh, R&D centers here as well. And so there's this really dynamic mix of local talent and local companies that have been founded from the ground up, uh, m mixing in or, or merging with those that are uh, multinationals that have come here uh, to work with both the companies and the talent that exist here. Sengen was founded as a center of excellence for commercialization and research, right? Is it through the the, the, the NSERC Caesar program that it was created? Yes, uh, Sengen's original mandate came uh, through funding from NCE's Caesar program five years ago mm. um, with uh, a mission of accelerating the commercialization of innovation in the ICT sector in Canada and improving the global competitiveness of Canadian technology innovation and, and companies uh, in Canada. Um, that uh, mission was uh, reinforced and even expanded, if you'd like, through um, uh, then a subsequent partnership with the government of Ontario about two and a half years ago. So the company now has uh, very solid partnerships with both the federal government and the Ontario provincial government. So your members are companies? Yes. So our, our ecosystem is wide and varied. Uh, obviously our government partners are key parts of our ecosystem, mm -hmm. but in the operationalization of our mission, um, our ecosystem includes um, our members who are technology leaders uh, nationally and internationally, uh, companies like Bell, Telus, Cisco, Juniper, Nokia, and you know Mitel and several others. Um, as well as the, the rest of our ecosystem includes the SMEs, the startups and the scale-ups that we support, and the academic institutions that we partner with um, in, in some of the elements of our mission. So we have, we have a wide ecosystem, it's, it's broad and varied, uh, which um, ultimately I think is one of the core strengths of the organization. How do you see the park from that perspective? So you were mm -hmm. at KNBA before, and now you're you're working with the university. What are your what drew you to 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 this role now working with the university? So what's interesting about this park is there's an awful lot of collaboration and partnership that has happened. In fact, the innovation curates itself by ensuring that there is collaboration even in a competitive landscape. Mm. And I think the interesting part about that is there is partnerships at all different levels, whether it be at the government level, the academic level, and amongst the companies themselves. Um, Jamie mentioned the connected uh, car and autonomous mm -hmm. vehicle ecosystem. It is a subsector within in the park, but is thriving mm -hmm. because there is an ecosystem of partnership that happens, uh, both competitive and collaborative. And this sort of coexistence and clustering is what is happening here in the park. And it's it, it's needed to ensure that we enable that technology. So that's for me a very um, because of the, the footprint of the park here in Canada's largest park, it, tech park, it, it's helpful to have that and there is an openness to partner and collaborate and innovators are coming here from outside the park mm. and, and also you know, wanting to lay their, uh, their foundation here for that. How do we, when, why do we call it Canada's biggest technology park? Is it the, is it the, the square, my units are no good, square acreage? Is it, is it the sheer size of it or is it the number of companies? What makes it, so you spoke about Canada North being Canada's largest technology park. So, mm -hmm. so what do we mean by that? Well, a number of factors go into that. Um, it, you know, it, it's indicated by the number of employees here in Canada North. We have 19,000 plus tech sector employees here within this uh, region uh, working here in the footprint of Canada North, plus an additional uh, 10,000 that are um, contributing within the halo around the park. Um, those subsectors that I mentioned, there are a number of, of companies that exist just, you know, in and with, with in Canada North, 
um, that contribute to the technology that's being developed here. So one is the employment base. The mm -hmm. second piece is in you know, our, uh, our number of companies, the industry that exists here. Over 540 companies exist here in Canada North, um, and they're represented by a number of those different subsectors that I had mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, and they all, collectively, with the talent and industry coming together, uh, contribute over $13 billion in GDP annually. Uh, and that's up 66% in the last three years from the previous economic impact assessment that we did in 2015. Mm -hmm. So we feel very um, proud mm -hmm. uh, and excited to, to let the world know uh, that we are Canada's largest technology park. Um, and that we're really making an impact here, of course, in Ottawa, across the country, and you know, beyond, uh, to the economy. Well, I think well, I, I noticed I came back to Ottawa two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. um, when last I was here, when I was doing my master's. So that was last when I was here. My supervisor brought us over to visit Mitel and Bell Northern Research and Northern Telecom. So it's been just a wee while since that time. Mm -hmm. So. The back then, it felt a little bit more fragile in the sense that it tended to be focused around a core of technology. Now it sounds as though it's much broader what we're doing here, isn't it? Yes, I would say so. I think you know that that things have diversified yeah. uh, both in the technology that's built here in Canada North, but also within the you know talent that we have here and those that are you know contributing to building uh, our technologies, um, and that's all extremely positive. You know, in terms and it's reflected you know in our growth that mm -hmm. we're seeing uh, as well. I don't know if there's anything that you would add. No, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, I think historically the the, the tech park has its foundations in some key anchors. Obviously, mm -hmm. Nortel and Bell Northern Research and, and Mitel and, and Corel and a few others. But, um, you know, historically, I think it's the, the tech sector here has been more hardware centric mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and very telecom centric. Um, and you see, you still see the strengths of, of those technology sectors in the park here, but there's much more diversification now. So the technology has not gone away. It's been enhanced with all kinds of other sectors. It's been and enhanced. It's, there's a lot more software-centric mm -hmm. uh, focus, and whether that's uh, AI or even in the networking sector, mm -hmm. the software elements of networking. As uh, you know, the, the the tech park has evolved with the trends of the industry. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Networks now are much more software-driven than they are just hardware uh, driven and so with that has come the diversification I think in the park mm -hmm. and also the fact you know I, I grew up in Nortel and I think the, the, the demise of the company is, is, is a shame in a way but at the same time having those 20 or 25,000 employees now seeding many other exactly. companies um, has allowed the, the strength of the park to multiply in many ways ultimately. Yeah, I, I would add to that in that, you know, as the this diversification has happened in the technologies that we're building and, you know, those that are contributing to it, one of the core strengths that we have here in Canada North is that senior expertise from, you know, 30 to 35 years ago of uh, engineers and developers, but also, you know, those, you know, business development executives that took us through that first phase of growth um, uh, and they're now contributing to the next phase of mm. growth in that you know Elspark is an example of a software as a service accelerator here in Canada North and the primary uh, mandate for Elspark is uh, in pairing those senior mentors, those senior experts, with our next generation of, of entrepreneurs and, and talent to help them to navigate, you know, this is a new type of technology that we're building or a new way that we're selling it, you know, in a, me a membership or software as a service subscription-based model. Um, but there are tried, true, and tested ways uh, in which, you know, you grow a company and those you will always be there. So whether it be, you know, utilizing channel or, you you know how to run uh, your product development team and engineering team in a way that is productive. Um, these are things that I think we have the the senior expertise, to, you know, in order to bring uh, to our next generation of talent here in Canada North uh, to continue to create global companies that um, that are very productive mm -hmm. and. 
I'll just jump in there. I think another important piece that we have here is obviously the presence of the post-secondary institutions. That's right. Um, you know, University of Ottawa has, has opened their Canada North campus here um, at the end of 2018. And I think that's a critical piece to the ecosystem, is the research side and the connecting uh, that with the development that is going on uh, in the different companies. And I think that, um, not that we're unique from a, from a technology park perspective, but it is a critical mm -hmm. keystone uh, to ensuring that we you know, build talent uh, and continue to have that technology innovation uh, that lends itself. So from, a, you know, from a, a partnering perspective also, that is critically important to have that available. And I think here in Canada North, for a very long period of time, we were recognized as Silicon Valley North. Um, uh, and, and I think, you know, there are a few components to building, you know, a thriving technology ecosystem that we really lead on and the introduction of a, a university presence with the, the a campus is one of them and if we compare um, or contrast against, you know, that preeminent ecosystem of Silicon Valley, you see um, a thriving uh, industry, both from the SMEs all the way up to you know global multinationals, uh, technology companies that uh, are just leading edge in what they're what they're putting out. The second component to that is is our um, post secondary you know presence. Stanford is right at the foothold of of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The third being a presence of, a fi of financial institutions and Menlo Park and, and the row of VCs that exist, again, in, in Palo Alto and Silicon Valley. Um, that's kind of those kind of three pillars that I think really contribute. Um, we, are, we are there and we have those exact uh, components here in Canada North and have for a very long time as well. So I think, you know, that, that presence of industry from SMEs all the way up to global multinationals, we check the box tenfold on that. Mm -hmm. um, this now introduction of a presence of a uh, uh, post-secondary institution here, again, a great way of connecting talent, research, and also professional development to you know the companies here in the park. What can we work on next? I think that financial presence mm -hmm. uh, in having you know those uh, institutions here from uh, venture capital to lending, um, you know even to those angel investors that have exited and, and are back in the park that activity happens here um, how do we all how do we bring that all together in a narrative that makes makes sense and I, I think we have an advantage here even to when Silicon Valley was starting because it was built off of land belonging to Stanford initially mm -hmm. and and in my previous life at another university we were developing a science park on the line owned by the university. Mm -hmm. And the challenge in Canada, because of the nature of the public universities and all that, it's actually kind of tricky to make that space attractive to companies to come mm -hmm. but play under their rules. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's it's built for the companies. That's right. And we've come here to, to uh, a year ago, to, to bring in hopefully everything we can bring to the ecosystem, but I think for the companies, it's it all, the rules are the rules of really indus, industry. That's right. And I think that's an advantage. Yeah. So, so you talked about collaboration. So did Jamie. So did Veronica. What are you looking for in terms of collaboration? And 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 as a sub question, you've got leading international competing companies. How easy is it to get them to collaborate together? So, the the rallying point for the collaboration of all of these different uh, companies who come from maybe different sectors or maybe who compete directly in, the, in our day-to-day -day work lives is, is belief and support for the mission of the company, which is to enable a competitive, growing, innovative tech sector in Canada. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, you know, competition is, um, is, is okay. You it's know, healthy. Competition yeah. is fuel for innovation. Yeah. Um, so, Sengen is a place, physically and um, virtually, where competing companies can come and collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's in an, an ecosystem of partners towards the programs that that we put in place to help the Canadian 
ecosystem or whether it is very tangibly, very physically in our test bed, in our technology infrastructure where you can come and test the latest innovative technologies um, in an open environment. Mm. Um, so the, the openness um, and the collaborative nature of a competitive ecosystem is, is one of the pillars of our mission. Mm. At the same time, we take the, the uh, intellectual property imperative of our members very seriously. And I remember when I was reading, when I was trying to develop that science park, I'd done some reading on, on the ecosystems. And one, a really interesting paper about the Waterloo region in 2008 it was. What it was saying is that the students were leaving the university to go to a co-op internship, learning a bunch of stuff there, mm -hmm. coming back to the university, bringing it back to the university mm -hmm. and influencing the profs, the course, and mm -hmm. all that, and then going to a different company for another internship. So that it was essentially a cross-pollination type of, yeah. of system. And and to me, that, that was clearly a key element. And I think the critical mass that there is in Canada North and, and the size of what we could do at the university now with the, the 6,000 students we have just in engineering, I think we're reaching that point where the more that we, we are able to bring the students out there, the more kind of experience you're able to give them really hands-on, I think it makes a lot of sense. It should be a winning solution. Yeah, and, and it's not just the experiences at Sengen per se, but it's, it's the, the um, window into a broader ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some of the things that we do, for example, is we'll provide students to, to do a term with one of our members, mm -hmm. for example. Um, or we'll, we'll put them to work towards a specific project charter that uh, is important to industry, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's creating the dots and it's making sure that we have the continuum of learning from the foundational theoretical aspects to the transition to you know, a, a working career to then continuing education yes. after that. Yeah. Because that's super important too. Some mm -hmm. of the things that we do are is to provide training uh, to people who are already experienced professionals, mm -hmm. but maybe need to learn the latest open source software technology mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Because again, the pace of change is, is really fast. And so even people who've been in the industry for 10, 15, 20 years have new stuff to learn every okay. day. Right? Well, and it's it also on the other side for our companies, you know, it, it enables them to have a competitive advantage because the pace of change is quickly, quick, evolving and you know with that these uh, new ways of uh, producing you know technology here in the park that the students are contributing mm -hmm. you know back into the company as well mm -hmm. yeah. and I think the, and I think the university really has a, a, a large role to play in, mm -hmm. in assisting in the talent both in the co-op and in, uh, in in shaping the kind of programs that you programming you have and mm -hmm. what, we, what what the park needs with respect to that uh, training as, as JC mentioned and I think looking at different opportunities to find solutions that are sector based mm -hmm. so yeah. you know what is going on in AI what is going on in um, autonomous vehicles um, you know what is going on in next-gen um, you know, networks yeah. uh, you know what is it that the that the, the companies really need and then be able to shape the programming so that the talent yeah. and the programming mm -hmm. are supporting those those needs yeah that's why to me those putting in place or growing significantly the research collaborations are very important between the companies and the profs because that's where our profs are connected to mm -hmm. what is the most pressing problems right mm -hmm. now and they can already lay the groundwork and the foundational training of the students at the same time as they're trying to contribute to the solution mm -hmm. because almost every single alumni I've spoken to in the last couple of years says the same thing of what was the value of their, their foundational training as mm -hmm. you call it JC learning to learn, learning to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it happened, it's definitely happening today, learning to do teamwork. But when you bring it down to that subsector of yeah. our connected and autonomous vehicles, you see, you know, we have on like a drive uh, live city infrastructure um, connected on a, a public test track. Mm -hmm. And um, many of our Canada North companies are all contributing in and within that BlackBerry, QNX, Nokia, Ericsson. So you'll see many of them mm -hmm. um, all contributing into that. And it's for, 
you know, the, the greater good of advancing, you know, how we are going to operate this technology uh, in real time in the future. And without collaborating with one another on that, their technology will never get to market. And mm -hmm. it will not ever get to the point of, of being on the roads in mm -hmm. real time. So it's important. Uh, and. And in addition to that, when we bring that um, you know, subsector together into a cluster, if we think about talent again, this talent, as they're coming out of university, they're looking, again, to make an impact and to, to solve real world problems. Um, and if we can convey that there's this ecosystem thriving here of a number of contributors that are collaborating, it's going to only enable us to be better equipped to attract that talent here. Um, and then you know, have it spread out across many of our connected and autonomous vehicles uh, companies and mm -hmm. that's you know an example of one of our subsectors yeah. it's happening in the others as well in that way how do we do with startups are we good to attract startups into Canada North yes yeah I, I mentioned Elspark and that's mm -hmm. my history that's mm -hmm. where I come from prior to uh, Canada North Business Association you know we have a portfolio at Elspark of over 55 software as a service companies and they come from across Canada okay. um, in order to contribute into the the uh, program there and um, the track record is incredible it la we launched five years ago over 50 million of venture capital has been raised in the last five years by that portfolio of companies um, early early stage uh, and we'll see you know other startups UI as an example yeah. uh, that's evolved into you know a later sa a stage yeah. company here in Canada North homegrown yeah. Um, so we, I think, are doing much better than we think. Now it's about conveying how you know those startups have grown and succeeded, um, and 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 I think we also need to support them in their next phase of growth. One thing that that is important to, to mention, not just in the context of Sengen, is when we talk about ecosystems, we're talking about there's there's a physical nature of an mm -hmm. ecosystem, and that when we talk about Canada North, we're talking about the physical aspect of mm -hmm. it, but ecosystems are global and they're mm -hmm. virtual. So and so, you know, when we're talking about building ecosystems for partnerships and collaboration, we can't limit ourselves physically. That's, but that right. may be just an aside. In terms of us attracting students, you know, it's a pan Canadian mandate that we mm -hmm. have. And so today in, in, in St. Gen, we have students from Victoria, from Waterloo, mm -hmm. from Dalhousie, from other places, obviously from the local schools. Mm -hmm. um, so attracting students is not the issue. I think attracting full-time talent is a challenge, okay. and not just for Sengen, for, for our members and for, uh, I think, the, the technology ecosystem in general. And uh, there's if there was a simple answer to how do we fix that, we, we would have done it already as a, as a community, right? So we have to continue to uh, graduate more STEM students. We have to continue to make sure that they stay in the country mm -hmm. or that if they go get experience abroad as we encourage as I, I did twice yeah. in my career which I'm grateful for that you mm -hmm. can come back mm -hmm. and you bring back that expertise yeah. um, back to the country because that adds to the fuel for our, our innovation economy um, so yeah I think I think we have work to do and back to the question about Ottawa you know I'm not an urban planner but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's been shown that creative industries of which tech is one mm -hmm. thrive on creative cities mm -hmm. and it's a virtuous circle right mm -hmm. you, you you bring those creative people and the, the the city becomes more vibrant more creative and it feeds on itself i'm not sure i imagine this but i think i saw recently a map of ottawa where you could fit in yes several cities several or several canadian cities. yeah that's right so physically yeah, physically, physically yeah. the size of ottawa is gigantic yeah. But and that makes it more it does, of a challenge it, it, it to it connect does. all of those parts together. But I go back then to my example of Silicon Valley. And when you think of Silicon Valley, that's not one area. It's San it's Jose, several. it's San yeah. Francisco, it's Palo Alto, Menlo Park. It started it's in one area, It's a number of them under grown. one. Yeah. And yeah. so if we think of our city, it's very, very similar. Yeah. There's, um, we, talk, we didn't talk about this, but we all know the transit and infrastructure issues that we have now as a result of the growth. Mm -hmm. There are some really interesting examples of how that area and their traffic issues are horrendous, mm -hmm. have um, from industry solved some of those uh, needs of bringing talent into Palo Alto from San mm -hmm. Francisco because inevitably young people do prefer to live downtown, yeah, but yes. they may want to have um, you know work that uh, exists in you know a park like this so you know there's examples of uh, private bus shuttles mm -hmm. wherein 
I think, is it Google or Facebook, one of the two, they'll send a shuttle from Palo Alto every day into San Francisco. There's mm -hmm. Wi-Fi and potentially cappuccinos available on the bus, mm -hmm. and it's a productive hour to hour and a half for that talent as they do their commute, yeah. and it's just an added benefit that those companies have included. I'll see you around Canada North. I want to thank you all for tuning in on this episode of the Make the Future podcast. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and that you learned as much as I did. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to the podcast to make sure you don't miss the next episode. I would also like to really thank our guests and the podcast production team. Carl Bournes, Valérie Sanson, Karen Massey, and Francis Bertrand Lafrenière. And I really hope you can join us next time.